So take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking about the sextant for some time. Hello, I'm back again, and I'm going to look at Quantum Eraser's latest effort on trying to explain this image that somebody called Hoimar has created. And I've taken the time to recreate it, and I'm hoping to clear up some of the confusion that Quantum Eraser and his pals are experiencing. So we know what an elevation angle is, right? It's taken off a horizontal plane and with the depiction I showed and the definition I gave you, and it's between the object and the surface. Look where this numpty alpha 53.86, this is the only angle on this diagram, and he said this is how the sextant works. So I'm assuming this is his elevation angle. So his elevation angle is between this horizon that's shooting almost straight up in the air, which is preposterous, right? And what's this? I put a question mark here. Yes, this is the observer's angle of elevation to the object in the sky. And to measure the angle, we need two lines, this line and this line. This line is the observer's line of sight to the star. And this line is the observer's horizontal reference. Um, he's, he's, he's drawn his zenith straight up from how he's looking at it instead of being in relation to the center of his earth. Yeah. I'm Go just, ahead. That's right. He hasn't moved it down to the center. I know he hasn't. No, you had it right before. This is the line of sight from the observer to the star. It's not the observer's zenith. Just because the zenith line isn't drawn in doesn't mean to say that it's not there. I wonder if this will make you happy. So now we've got 53.86 for the angle of elevation, and we have the complementary angle of 36.14. Add these two numbers up and you get 90 degrees. Normally you would take this 36.14 and multiply it by 60 in order to determine the distance from the observer to the GP. What's, what's he shoot? Where's the elevation angle to? The plane of the horizon? Yeah, yeah. The horizon is now up at, what, 45 degrees? up from the surface <laughs> of the sphere. I thought we've already established that this was the line of sight to the star. And this was the zero degrees horizontal reference for the observer. Let me see if I can find a definition for you. The reference direction, i.e. an elevation angle of zero degrees, is a horizontal line in the direction to the horizon. A horizontal line in the direction to the horizon. That's Earth curve there. Their horizon in globe terminology is Earth curve, by the way. The plane of the horizon where you've got question mark top left. Is that, is that the geometric horizon? What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> it's not that hard to understand. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. yeah. It is. Sorry. Just as a, if your zenith is like between the top of your head to the ground, he would have to have proper clown shoes on and be leaning forward to have... <laughs> oh, he's... <laughs> Halfed is, is the angle, isn't he? He's literally leaning forward on the surface of the earth at 45 degrees almost to create that zenith. That's yeah. very... Well, well, it's nonsensical anyway. This doesn't have anything to do with the elevation angle, folks. You see where the elevation angle has to be? It has to be right. You see this distance? He colored it brown, right? What? Why did he color that brown? There's no, he doesn't have any angle. The angle should be right here between the, observer. see, the, he's the blue observer right here. You need to put him up so I can at least see where the angle should be. It should be between the surface. Remember the horizontal plane, which this is not, and the object. He's got it between the zenith and the horizon. This doesn't make any damn sense. Let me ask you a question. This says GP, the geographical position. The geographical position of what, pray tell? What's here? This is the 
geographical position of Polaris, the North Pole, if you like. And this line takes you to Polaris. This line of sight for the observer also takes you to Polaris. Let's zoom out and have a look at that. Polaris is over 300 light years from Earth. Here I've made it about one light minute. Uh, one light minute is sufficient enough so that any light coming from this star towards Earth will be, for all intents and purposes, be parallel. Let me bring this closer to Earth and I'll zoom in. So check out this angle now. I have a feeling that QE would like to have Polaris down here somewhere on his picture. So it makes a little bit more sense to him. Unfortunately, stars aren't this close to Earth. So let me push Polaris away, but keep an eye on this angle here. Notice how it never ever increases above 53.86, no matter how high I put it. I could keep going to 300 light years and it'd still be the same. He just made this shit up. This is utterly ridiculous. He's... What is this? I'll tell you what, if you look at it, look, it's 53.86 degrees, which if he did line stuff up correct, you look at where that dot is, it's about Liverpool, isn't it? Or, uh, uh, it's about where England is, right? So if you did line all your angles up, because he's obviously pulled that number from somewhere, it's not from the diagram, then that will probably would be uh, the equivalent um, angle to Polaris from somewhere in the UK, yeah? It could be Hamburg, for all you know. So that's what it appears to be representing. But what it shows is that he's got no idea of that, and he's drawn it all... Completely incorrectly. I mean, totally. <laughs> it's hard to. Uh, I put more question marks on it than you've put, John. Now, <laughs> I, <laughs> what? What is this little pointy finger to Polaris? What, okay, so what? 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 What's? What's that mean? Uh, that means that Polaris is a really huge thing. That and all, all like from Polaris because it's so big and so far away. But it's so big, all like from Polaris comes in parallel. That's what that's about. And as I've just demonstrated, the reason why the light comes in in parallel is because of the distance the star is away, not the size of it. <laughs> and yet, he's got it with two straight lines running down. So he's like you said, Huey or Adam, leaning forward, doing the Michael Jackson pose as he's measuring this up at 45 degree angle off the sphere. This is such a train wreck. Nice example how your ball doesn't work with celestial navigation. Excellent example, in fact. It's a complete train wreck. Sphere doesn't work with celestial navigation. It's just that simple. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of have circles. <laughs> what I'd love to see from QE, Nathan, Oakley, Adam, Brian's Logic, whoever, are examples of how things actually should be done for a flat Earth. Give us an example. Show us some scale. Give us some dimensions. Give us some figures, some numbers. Talk about train wrecks. None of you had a clue of what that drawing was supposed to be about. Anyway, this is the link to the 
video on QE's channel that I got this from and I'll put a card up here uh, to a video that I've done before showing how it does work for a globe earth and it's all to scale and that shows you also how it doesn't work for flat earth so give me a like if you want and uh, thanks for watching I'll catch you later